Welcome, world, to Nobody's a Nobody podcast with me, Mike McVeigh. This is going to be a very different podcast. It's a special episode where instead of doing what we normally do, which is me chatting with friends and trying to just collect their stories so I can keep a legacy going, we're going to go into something very specific. I'm with my friend Curtis McMurtry here, who's a PhD doctor, not to be confused with one of those medical doctors. And we were having a discussion a couple days ago for his upcoming episode. And through that, I realized that this is something that I can act now and it's going to be helpful. We're going to be talking about COVID-19, the coronavirus, the thing that everybody is loving to hate or hating to love right now. And this is also going to be on YouTube, which is going to be a, hopefully a very rare occurrence because I don't want to do all the work to do this <laughs> weekly, let alone more than once a week. But, uh, we really want to make sure that this is, has as many avenues as possible to be able to get explored. So uh, as you can see, they're above, probably above me on the screen that you're seeing is Curtis. And Curtis, why don't you give us a little bit of your credentials of why we should listen to you about COVID-19? All right. So uh, I got my PhD um, in microbiology and immunology uh, at the University of Oklahoma. Um, and for my dissertation, I studied West Nile virus and the immune response to West Nile virus. Um, and then uh, after I graduated I, uh, uh, um, from grad school, I did my postdoc and I'm working for a company um, both at the University of Oklahoma and in a company here MHC in Oklahoma City. Um, and I did, uh, I stayed in the same field. So I was involved in um, studying uh, tuberculosis, uh, so the dengue virus, yellow fever virus, uh, uh, a little bit of HIV. Um, and at the company, we have recently uh, studied the immune response against uh, uh, certain, ca certain kind of uh, cancers. Um, so the immune response to viruses and cancers, and some bacteria are pretty similar. So um, when uh, coronavirus came out, the company decided to uh, 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 initiate a study on the immune response to COVID-19. And so what we, when, whenever we study the immune response, we, uh, we turn that into vaccines or we try to turn that into vaccines, we try to turn that knowledge into um, something that is basically um, able to get your immune system to do what it does naturally. Um, right, I'm going I'm to stop you for just a second because yeah. you're talking very sciencey. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, not that everybody knows this yet. If you know me, you know I'm not really a science person so much. A philosophy of science, I can speak to you all day. But science itself, which is one reason why it's even better to have you on here to explain some of the things that non sciencey people like me can definitely benefit from this. And I might have to stop you from time to time because sure, no problem. One, one, this will not be edited the way my shows are normally edited to take out the ums and ahs that I normally try to at least minimize. <laughs> yeah. But also because I want to make sure people don't really think that this is something else. Now there, that was one set of credentials. You also have another set of credentials that might mean a little bit more for people that, have certain views on COVID. Uh, you have a family, correct? Yep, I do. So in your in your household, what what, what does that include exactly? I have uh, two daughters, a uh, thirteen year old and a four year old, and uh, uh, we adopted we adopted my wife's sister uh, who's sixteen, um, and we have two little puppies, and my wife and I. And they're ferocious little puppies too. Oh, yeah. I met yeah. them this afternoon. And so whatever we're talking about, this isn't just coming from you as a doctor scientist type person, but this is also coming from you as a family person as a, that these aren't just like abstract yeah. ideals. They're not. I follow everything I say and I uh, uh, encourage my family to also follow uh, what I say. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily, I'm not, uh, this is advice I follow myself. <laughs> One of the things that if you're watching the YouTube video, you'll automatically see something that's a little bit different about both of us from even a couple months ago. Neither of us have beards right now. And 
I only had my beard going for about a year and a half. I was very proud of that beard. I don't know how long you had your beard. How, how long did you have it? About two years. Yeah. Two years. Goodness. Yeah. And we come from that bearded community. You don't just shave off your beard, but I know for both of both of us, the reason why we went ahead and shaved it uh, down or shaved it off completely was really in response to this pandemic of coronavirus. Is that correct? Yeah, 100%. You know, in, in my case, it was, uh, uh, I was actually working in a biosafety level three with a live virus. So I had to be clean shaven so I could safely handle the virus. Um, so that's, uh, that's basically what initiated it. But you know, since then, I've kept the beard off, uh, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. At the end of this time we'll spend together, we'll actually have you show us how to put on a mask correctly if they have the uh, N95 version, because I know uh, the one that you let me have today, I'm already confused. So probably learning how to do that right will definitely make it better for me. But we're going to go ahead and get started with some of the other things. I do want to just give a, I don't really think disclaimer is the right word, but this episode makes me so nervous and so scared because I know that coronavirus has caused a lot of political divide and has caused unrest across the world, not just here in Oklahoma, but across the world for different things. I have friends on social media that have gone as far as saying all this is a hoax or an elaborate scheme from one party or that party. And then I've had friends who have actually contracted the virus themselves. Fortunately, they're still living, but I've had coworkers where they've had people who have died directly because of coronavirus, not because of a, a complication that coronavirus is in, involved. So I feel like I'm very much in the middle and I hear bits and pieces. Uh, my work requires me to wear a mask when I go to work and any customer that comes into our office have to wear a mask. But the reason why this show makes me nervous, because again, as I said a little bit earlier, this shows multi more because I love hearing about people and about what they're fascinated about. That's what makes them fascinating to me. And this might cause a little bit of controversy and that's not my goal, but my goal is if <laughs> this show was originally going to come out on July 6th, two days after 4th of July weekend. And because of our conversation that we had a couple days ago, you said that you really feared there might be a spike that's higher than, at least here in Oklahoma, that would be a lot higher than anything that we've already seen before 4th of July. And if even the few people or hope maybe the billions of people somewhere in between a few and a billion uh, that watch this or listen to this can be safer and healthier after all this, I, I just really felt like this needed to be done um, ASAP. So after talking to my wife and getting over my fears, you were kind enough to agree to do a second mini interview. Um, but let's just start with kind of the basic because I already kind of gave you <laughs> what's going on in my social media where a one being, it's a complete hoax uh, to attend being um, we're all going to die. And where would you rate this from your perspective? I mean, it's, it's, it's probably solidly in the middle, honestly. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely not a hoax. Uh, people are dying. Um, it is also not, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, like a plague. Um, so, you know, it, 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 the mortality rate is not, you know, 10% on the normal population or higher. Um, so it's not like Ebola uh, percents, but it still is a very dangerous and very real virus. Um, so, you know, it, it's probably, it, you know, it's probably somewhere. In the middle. I would probably lean towards uh, more on the dangerous side than the hoax because that's kind of an extreme <laughs> but isn't isn't COVID-19 just basically a flu oh I mean it is definitely not the flu um, oh it's not yeah I mean it's 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 so it's not the same virus right so it's uh, uh, a, a flu virus is an influenza virus and this is a coronavirus so uh, they are similar in their uh, genomes and, and the, the way that they infect in, in terms of uh, respiratory infections and how they spread. Um, but there's uh, some very important differences between the flu and COVID-19. Can, so, can you give yeah. us an example of what that would be? Yeah, so I mean, for COVID-19, whatever I'm about to tell you is basically what we know at this point, which is not a lot. And so with flu, we've had it for a while, so we understand it very well. And so, you know, the, the mortality rates uh, with COVID-19 are 
pretty close estimates. Um, so when you he, when you see these numbers that are, um, you know, one percent to fifteen percent, um, they are they are not going to be in the same realm as maybe a flu number would, um, because flu because the reason why is because in flu they know or they have a pretty good handle on the asymptomatic rate. Right? How many people are walking around? Um, with the flu, never come to the hospital, never get tested. They know about how many people that is. That, um, and so they can use that as basically the denominator in their calculations. Okay, so you're, you're starting to talk science again. Oh, no, yeah. Um, <laughs> so why, for a regular person like me, that what does that mean? Like, are the numbers different? I mean, I have read the numbers, but interpret those maybe in a way that some some regular people like myself might. I would say understand. I would say they're unknown for COVID nineteen, and they're probably higher. Uh, the mortality rate is probably higher than it actually is because we don't know how many people are infected, and so um, you know that's the bottom. That's what they divide the the, um, the case fatality rate. That's the number they divide is how many people had it. Well, we don't know how many people have it, and so um, but it's probably it, it's almost certainly nowhere near flu. It's almost certainly more deadly than flu. Um, for a specific number, we don't know yet. Um, the other Sorry. thing that the other thing that makes coronavirus uh, much more different than the flu is that we have a vaccine for influenza, a seasonal vaccine. Um, it's not the best vaccine, um, but it does offer protection um, and it mitigates a lot of the mortality and. and morbidity associated with influenza infections and so because we have that uh, uh, because we have that vaccine we can keep influence the seasonal influenza numbers very low and so yeah. I'm gonna also mention just some different things that I've heard um, either in person or on social media because I think if we just address those directly that will at least help um, isn't this really just all about money for the pharmacies and big pharma? Oh, you mean the vaccine? <laughs> well, no, just that this is all, uh, some people say that this is all just being per perpetuated traded so the pharmacies can make money for more people quicker. Yeah. I mean, the, the pharmaceutical companies are almost certainly not making a lot of money off of this. So not only is it uh, very expensive to uh, engineer a successful vaccine and produce it, um, but you're, the customer is going to be the governments of the world. It's not going to be the individuals. It's not going to be the, the, um, uh, the uh, uh, insurance companies. It's going to be the governments. And the governments are who are going to buy this, and they are going to not spend a lot of money on it. So uh, the um, major pharmaceutical companies, uh, they – realize that they are not going to be making a lot of money off of a COVID-19 specific vaccine. Um, but this I is not, this is not something that's necessarily perpetrated by one version of government versus the other. So like for United States, no matter who wins the election in November, this is still something that's going to be going forward. And it's yeah, not, sure. it's not, it's not political. It, it is very much apolitical. I mean, the, the underfunding of science is a political um, but uh, uh, they're, um, the pharmaceutical companies that are going to be manufacturing this have already committed time and resources. Um, they're going to see this through uh, for sure. I think the only, maybe the only exception to that would be is if uh, these current vaccines that we have funding for are completely ineffective and don't work um, and they, we need a sustained amount of um, government funding f to fund the research on coronavirus in order to defeat it. Um, honestly, I don't see that being, uh, 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 you know, a political issue, um, no matter who's uh, in, in control of the government. Okay. Uh, there are going to be a couple other things I'm going to bring up in a minute, but in a sense, we still haven't gotten to the meat of why we're, why I've made this such an emergency recording. Why why is it better to have this put out either Tuesday night or Wednesday morning? You're talking about June 16th or 17th instead of waiting till July 6th to communicate this information. Yeah. I mean, um, unfortunately the, uh, uh, the um, 
uh, first of all, I have to say that um, it's still very early um, and it's hard to uh, um, predict the future off of, um, off of uh, uh, these small increases that we're seeing. Um, but so they are small increases that we're seeing in the number of cases currently, but they are significantly above the background, right? So they and are. So, so explain that for me. So, so it's not, it's not noise and it's not, it's not, uh, it, uh, it's not the baseline. It's significantly above the baseline. So it's a small shift, but all the logarithmic, logarithmic growth is uh, a small shift, a small shift at the beginning. And so the concern is, is that this is the beginning of log logarithmic growth or logarithmic spread. And, uh, um, we need to act now. The other thing is, is that this, these spikes uh, that are coming out um, in a large number of states who have opened up, opened their states up, um, the timing of this event is consistent with the opening of the states and the incubation period of the virus. So when, the, when you're saying the opening of the states, you're talking about like in Oklahoma, we had phase three on June 1st, which allowed um, most businesses to be able to operate as normal just with a limited capacity. Yes. Is that, is that what we're talking about? Okay, just, talking just about. make sure. Yeah, so um, the, the uh, states and cities that have decided to um, open the, the state and the city um, in these kind of uh, phase three uh, uh, methods, um, they, uh, that happened two weeks ago, um, basically at the beginning of the month, and that is around the incubation time of this virus. Um, so uh, people were likely starting to be infected again um, when the states opened. And so uh, there's always going to be a two week delay, basically. And when you're I, saying infected again, you don't mean like an individual person getting infected twice, or um, do you? No, no, no. That's sorry. That's not what I mean. Uh, the, the the people have gone out um, who haven't been infected and are now infected again, or now infected. <laughs> they're now being exposed <laughs> and getting infected. infected. Okay. Yeah, when I say infected again, I mean uh, the curve is coming back. Uh, it's the second. Uh, it's the second uh, 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 peak. Okay. So, now, one of the things that we, when we talked on Sunday. You mentioned that this could be greatly reduced from just doing a couple different things, which obviously can't be the case. If we just put masks on and we wash our hands, that we could avoid a good chunk of this. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah. Isn't think... that just a little bit too simple? Because, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of saying this sarcastically, yeah. but seriously. Yeah, no, I mean... It, 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 it's, it's maybe, we'll say maybe three things, right? So you have, uh, uh, it's going to be um, definitely washing your hands because you can, um, you can get it from uh, touching infected surfaces or, or surfaces that are contaminated. Um, so routinely washing your hands is not a terrible idea. It's very simple. You can do it. Um, the, uh, the wearing of masks reduces transmission. It doesn't eliminate the transmission. So uh, um, if, uh, if everyone is wearing masks, it is greatly reduced. If only half the people are wearing the mask, it is not as effective because there's not that many people uh, um, reducing their transmission, right? So I was gonna say that the, uh, um, the surgical mask that there and the cloth mask that the CDC is recommending that people wear uh, prevents you from spreading the virus. If you are asymptomatic and you have it, they prevent you from spreading it to others. They don't prevent, they don't effectively prevent you from contracting the virus from somebody who is uh, um, not masked, for example. So um, in order for the masking to work, the majority of the population needs to be wearing masks because um, it is a uh, uh, stopping your you transmitting that virus to another person. And really the only way that we can know if you're part of that majority or minority is if everybody wears a mask. Is that correct? 
Yeah, right. I think every, everyone has to wear a mask in order for it to be effective. If only half the people are wearing the mask, then it's it's not it's not going to be that effective. Um, the other thing. I'm going to come back to the mask in just a second because um, yeah. that is going to be something we'll spend a little bit more time on. But the grocery store I go to, in fact, my place of work, they put up kind of splash guards or windows in front. So if I've got that window in front, I really don't need to wear a mask and, the per and my customer doesn't need to wear a mask, right? No, I mean, that's, that's not true. Um, you know, it's a physical barrier, yes, and it can prevent droplets. Um, but those droplets can go around the the barrier and so the mask is covering most of your face and preventing most of the aerosols or the droplets from being um, projected out of your body so having that uh, having that barrier is not going to be nearly as effective as, as if both of you are wearing the mask even without the barrier so like and i know you can't give exact percentages but compared to not having that barrier at all how much how much effectiveness would a uh, you know, we're talking about usually it's about a quarter inch. Yeah, I guess it's better than nothing, right? I mean, it, it is a physical barrier and you're putting it up and it's stopping, um, it's stopping the droplets from, you know, basically um, traveling to the, to the other person. Um, but the masks um, are uh, getting rid of most of that because they cover the majority of your face, right? If you're just, if you're just breathing out, those droplets, they don't go in a stream, they go in a cone and they can go around the, uh, they can go around the uh, barrier. Okay, I think that's one thing that, again, my unsciency brain, I just think that when we talk, it just goes straight out, but you're saying it kind of does more of a megaphone kind of, kind of thing. Gravity, and then there's this like kind of arc with gravity, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to bring more science into it, don't you? An <laughs> episode of MythBusters, uh, so they end up really showing that. So, so yeah, and I said no, I'm not going to edit. So yeah, for that pause right there for people listening. The problem with masks that I have, or at least this is the common problem, is they get really hot, and I don't want to wear it on my face all day. And I've got kids and they don't want to wear it on their face all day. Yeah. You don't have to wear it on your face all day. So, I mean, if you're at home with your family, you don't have to wear a mask. Uh, if you are in an area with maybe more than 10 people, you should probably wear a mask. So if you're going to the store, wear a mask. Once you're in your car, you can take your mask off. So you, you don't need to, you don't need, you're basically protecting the people around you from contracting the virus if you have it, right? So, um, and what they want to do is to um, keep it from spreading um, rapidly. So if you are infected and you infect your family, you can recognize that and stay home. Um, if you're infected and you spread it to 10 people at Walmart and then they go and spread it to their family, um, that's what they're trying to avoid. Um, well, kind of let's right. let's be fair. If we're at Walmart, we're be infecting like five thousand people because yeah, uh, there's not anybody wearing masks up there. Yeah, uh, there's not, <laughs> not just Walmart. Yeah. It's in, it's any of the businesses. It's not limited to that. Yeah. So it's been almost exactly three months since most of the states put their initial orders in to having a stay at home or safer at home kind of initiatives throughout the United States, not just Oklahoma and. You know, you know, our restaurants are going out, uh, are having a really difficult time. And, you know, it's Father's Day coming up this weekend. And obviously my wife wants to take me out for dinner or I want her to take me out to dinner. Yeah. It's okay to go to a restaurant, right? As long as we're like six feet away from other tables. I mean, uh, so the masks are much more effective at reducing the transmission than social, social distancing is. Um, if you have to go out, um, definitely make sure you're more than six feet. Um, there has been recommendations of eight to 10 feet. You know, the, the, the problem is, is that, um, you know, uh, you, the, the people, the people serving the, um, people at your tables are going to be much more susceptible because they have to be in close range to you. Um, and they have to come and deliver your food and they have to 
but they have to do that for not only you, but then the next person, and then the next person, and then the next person, and the next person. Um, if they only have a surgical mask on and you're eating and you don't have any kind of mask, you're essentially, um, you're putting those servers at risk. You see what I'm saying? So you contracting it and staying six feet is probably going to be fine. You're not going to contract it. Uh, but if you if you if you're sitting there at the table and the server comes by and then the next person comes in and the server comes by and the next person and the server comes by, um, they're going to be more susceptible to it. Now you said if they're only wearing a surgical mask, are there certain masks that might be a little bit more beneficial for a server or someone who has to come in proximity of multiple people every day? Yeah, the 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 N95 masks are going to uh, very much protect you from people not wearing a mask. Yep, they'll say N95 on them. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, for those who are, <laughs> I, I just put up masks to the screen for those who are listening. Uh, what does the N95 do that my wife's mask that she made with a cute little design on it uh, don't aren't able to do? Uh, uh, an N95 is, mask is designed to filter all of the air coming to you. So it actually creates a seal on your face. Um, and when you breathe in, uh, it filters all of the air that you inhale. And when you exhale, it actually lifts off your face a little bit. Um, and it, uh, um, it lets the air out, right? So it's kind of like a one way valve where you just where you breathe in, air, all the air is filtered and then you, when you breathe out, you, it, it breaks the seal. So um, the, uh, the N95's intention is to completely protect you from somebody who is not masked or protect you from a, a situation where uh, somebody cannot be masked. Like and in the, the hospital. And yeah. I, I, I didn't even prep you on this. I did prep Curtis on several of the questions so he wouldn't be uh, thinking 20 minutes for each one or anything, but do you know approximately how much an N95 mask would cost, generally speaking? Oh, I think you probably, I don't know how much they are, honestly. Uh, I think you should be able to get them for uh, like probably, I don't know, 5 to $10. I don't know. <laughs> but, but unlike, unlike the, the blue surgical style masks, these things you told me that should be able to last for up to a month very easily, not counting the band on it on the back. Right, yeah, you should be able to reuse these, especially if you decontaminate them. Um, and there are ways of decontaminating these uh, things. What would be the easiest way to decontaminate? Um, well, I mean, so there's a bunch of ways. Uh, probably one of the, the e so you can, you can uh, uh, sterilize it with Lysol. Um, you can spray it down with Lysol, but many Lysols have perfumes and you don't want to be inhaling any of that. Um, you can, uh, sterilize it with a 70% solution of ethanol, which is like high proof alcohol, like uh, 150 proof alcohol. Um, and if you spritz that on the front um, and the back and let it air dry, um, it should be it should be sterile for you to uh, use again. Um, there's a f there's another method where they um, where they bake it at 180 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Um, that sounds like that would take a little while. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like, it's like a three hour sterilization. I think, uh, my main concern with that is that the rubber would degrade, um, so where it wouldn't, um, uh, create a proper seal on your face and then it wouldn't be very useful. It'd be basically like a surgical mask. All right. So, and again, we, we had some of these conversations earlier this week, so it, it doesn't have some of the punch and panache that might would come normally but from your perspective as a scientist as a immunologist which i probably said that wrong but we're just gonna pretend that my accent didn't do anything to it which is safer going to the grocery store or going to disney world <laughs> like with nothing like no, with no, well, no like i i have my h95 or my n95 mask i mean it Look, so when you're in the grocery store, you are in a confined, you are in indoors typically, um, and you have a whole bunch of people around. Um, if you're wearing an N95, you should be 
pretty much fine um, because you're you are not going to be uh, uh, the mask is going to be basically filtering in the air. Um, if everyone is wearing surgical masks, even better. Um, at Disney World, it's a little bit different because you have you're outside, and so being outside helps because there's air circulation and the aerosols can't. Um, be stagnant um, in the air, they, they float away. Um, however, there's a lot more people at Disney World than maybe at Walmart. Uh, uh, I mean, maybe not now, but whenever I've gone, it's, uh, it's pretty jam-packed uh, full of people. And so, um, um, you know, I would, I probably have to say Disney World's more dangerous because of the sheer number of people that you're interacting with. All right, um, so if this is just a cloth mask and I'm yeah. the only one at the grocery store wearing it and you know Disney or Universal or any of the other major parks, they're not going to let everybody walking around without masks on. So, yeah. if, so if I was just wearing a cloth mask at the grocery store, would that be safer? And, I, and the way grocery stores are right now, there's only generally one person, yourself and maybe a employee with the mask half on, which is, which is safer, the grocery store or Disney World? I would say if you are wearing a cloth mask and you go into Walmart with nobody else is wearing masks or very few people are wearing masks and you have a cloth mask on, that is probably more dangerous than everyone wearing masks at, uh, for you. It's more dangerous uh, if everyone is wearing masks and you're outdoors. Uh, the Your answer sounds a little bit different than last time. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get over the density of people at, at Disney World. Uh, so, I mean, N95s, they're not perfect, so you just reduce your chance. But if you encounter a whole lot of people, then the chances, you know, the, the chances is a percent, right? So you... Uh, you Fair enough. <laughs> just try quit messing with my trip to Disney, man. <laughs> so if I'm, do I need to wear a mask if I'm exercising outdoors? Like if I'm walking or running or I'm sure there's other exercises outdoors. I don't know what that would be. No. If, you, if you're not interact, I think, I think a, maybe a good rule of thumb is if you're, uh, if you're around, um, you know, maybe five or less people, um, you and you're outdoors. You shouldn't. You shouldn't really need to wear a mask okay. um, because because I think you know I think that uh, um, what they're looking to do is to reduce the community transmission of the virus. And so that that is with a whole bunch of people when you are in public areas that have more than five people. What about swimming pools? I mean, if the swimming pool isn't crowded, I think you're probably fine. Um, you know, if, if, if the swimming pool is packed and you're outdoors, then that's probably not a good idea. You, you, you probably shouldn't go swimming because you wouldn't want to swim with a mask on, I imagine. And I, and I have no idea what places that have water parks are and stuff. And I, and I know they're going to limit no matter what, how many people can go into the water park at any one time. But if they did open up white water or wet and wild or something like that, would that be safe to go to? Or is it something that's still really not? Because the reason why I ask is I know one th in March spring break, you had a lot of people that were swimming in either the ocean or swimming pools at hotels and stuff. And that caused a lot of the uh, spikes in those areas. Yeah. I mean, really the key is to be spread out. You know, if you're spread out, then it's a whole lot safer than if you're packed into if you have 500 people packed into a tiny pool. Um, so if you're spread out at the beach, there's not a lot of people around, uh, you're going to be fine. You know, you, your, your transmission is going to be much lower. Your, your, your uh, chances of getting it are going to be much lower and also giving it to other people are going to be much lower. And we might have to show a clip later. Um, cause I know we're getting close to the time limit of what I'm hoping to get with this, but, um, COVID-19 is basically SARS, but a little bit modified or mutated or some word that is sciencey again um why can't we just use the sars thing from 2003 2004 why can't we just use the vaccine for that and everything just goes away so we can go back to our regular lives yeah so um first of all uh this virus is um uh, its official name is sars coronavirus 2 um, so it is related to SARS-1, the, the virus in 2004. Um, and, uh, uh, um, 
this is what I mean. This is what people are. This is what vaccine designers are doing right now. Is what your suggestion? They have taken what the the small amount of immunology we knew about SAR, right, the first SARS and applying it to this virus. Um, we didn't have a vaccine for SAR for the first SARS, um, partly because it it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, it didn't, it what I mean, relatively speaking. I was going to say, you know, there are a few thousand people would probably disagree yeah, with you on that. Relatively, uh, relative to the global pandemic and even influenza, it didn't, it didn't affect that many people. So people studied it because they were worried about a different strain of the virus coming out and causing a pandemic. They were worried about future viruses, which actually SARS-2 came out. And so there was a few labs that studied uh, uh, coronavirus or SARS, and it wasn't a lot. Um, and then when the uh, SARS-CoV-2 came out, um, instead of having to spend all of the time doing the research, which is years, um, they took what they knew, what we st what we knew about SARS-1, and applied it to the vaccine. And so they knew uh, before SARS-2 came out that a protein called spike um, was something that your immune system liked to go after, where you can make antibodies that, that'll effectively control the virus. So the vaccine designers, that's what they're doing right now. They've put spike into a bunch of different, uh, um, not all of them, but most of them have uh, put a form of spike into their vaccine. And that what they're trying to do is they're trying to get your immune system to make antibodies against that protein because they know that in the natural SARS infection, that is a thing that happens. And so if they can get your immune system to repeat what happens in the natural infection, then, they, uh, then they've successfully immunized you. So yeah, I mean, that's, you, that's exactly what people did. <laughs> that we took whatever we knew about SARS-1 and made a vaccine off of that. And I know, you, and you might not be able to go into great detail since you're one of the ones helping trying to work on some of those vaccines and stuff, but do we have any kind of timetable on how quickly a vaccine might come out? I mean, realistically, I think that uh, I'm probably going to repeat what Dr. Fauci said, um, and that is the end of this year and the beginning of the year. Um, there are a few vaccines out there that look like they're doing good. Uh, the Moderna vaccine, I think, is on the phase three at this point. Uh, or, nope, they're on phase two, I think. Um, but they've moved past uh, phase one trials and are on the phase two trials. And I think they uh, intend on very soon initiating phase three trials. So um, they are getting close to have a, a, an effective vaccine. And if that vaccine works, if the uh, Moderna vaccine or I think there's a uh, Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Uh, there's a couple others. If those, va if, if one of those vaccines is effective, um, and it gets your immune system to make a response that um, protects you, um, then they can manufacture. I feel very confident that they can manufacture enough doses, at least for the U.S., uh, um, by the end of the year or the beginning of the next year. So uh, you know, people have. Uh, <laughs> definitely kicked it into high gear. Uh, there's a lot of people looking at this and studying it, and there's a lot of uh, uh, time and money in both government funding and, it, and uh, pharma uh, company funding as well um, in trying to get this vaccine out there. So I honestly think that they're going to, if these vaccine, if these first round vaccines do work, then I feel very confident that they are going to have vaccines out by the end of the year or the beginning of next year. Okay. Now you said that you, and I, I won't necessarily read it out loud, but you're okay with people contacting you by email if they have any questions specifically about COVID-19? Yeah, they can email me at my uh, uh, university email, uh, okay. Curtis, Curtis McMurtry at OUHSC.edu. Yeah, and I'll have that in the show notes as well. Um, I do apologize that we're not going to get a chance to go through the fun stuff with you, but we'll we'll definitely have that eventually in the future. And if you're cool with it, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks, uh, we can. Your all your predictions will be wrong, and the world will be perfect. And hey, man, you know what though? Like all of these predictions, you know, we all hope we're wrong. 
uh, the last thing I want is is a bunch of people dying. Um, you know, what makes me happy is not being right. What makes me happy is not killing people. <laughs> um, so yeah. it, it, if if this was a blip in the radar um, and it started tanking the next day, whether we were intervening or not, we didn't change our policies and it was just a fluke and, you know, it was due to all this, I'll be happy to be wrong um, because that means people aren't dying. And so, uh, um, you know, that's really, you know, that's really what we care about. Uh, it's not about being right. <laughs> and, I, and I think that's one reason why we're pushing this out a little bit quicker and specifically focusing on this, this specific issue with COVID-19. I, I don't, I know a lot of people are planning on having fun on 4th of July weekend, but as much as possible, wear your masks. Um, in just a minute, Curtis is going to show us how to put those on. But for those who are only listening, you're not going to be able to see it. <laughs> but um, wear your masks. Even if it's a cloth mask, it will give some protection. and Hopefully, it will encourage others. But if you're at all possible, get one of these uh, N95 masks. They have a long time, and you can clean them. They can, they'll can they work for a while. Um, wash your hands. Every time you're touching something that could possibly – well, wash your hands, period, because that's just the right thing to do. We were told that as kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you don't have access to soap, man, just send me an email. We'll find a way to get you some soap because uh, this this is too serious to, again, as Curtis said, I, I, I hope for everything in the world that we're completely wrong and that there's not going to be another spike. There's not going to be a lot of unnecessary death. But if we can help anybody out, please wear your mask. Please wash your hands. Use sanitizer. When necessary, try to keep your distance socially. Um, not that social distancing is everything, as you said, but it is a factor that can help. Um, this will be the end of that thing, but please contact Curtis, contact me. This video hopefully will come across as informational. And if it is, even if you disagree with some of the things, please share it with your friends because we share it with your enemies unless you really hate them and then don't share it with their enemies because we really want as many people as possible uh, to be safe. Um, even the people I don't miss are alike. I don't want you to die because of something as silly as this. So um, thank you for listening. Podcasters, YouTubers, wait just a little bit longer. And Curtis is going to show us how to put on uh, the N95 mask properly uh, because again, I'm an idiot and I need help. So, so first of all, um, these masks are designed to seal on your face. So you need to make sure that you have maybe you can have some stubble, but you should have your face more or less cleanly shaved uh, for the guys. Um, and so um, uh, there are uh, various different types of N95s. This is one of them. Um, and so I've given Mike uh, an N95 so he can kind of practice along, but basically you have uh, two, Kind of uh, rubber bands on the back, um, and all, N all N95s have two of them, um, and they're to be placed differently on your head. Um, so, Mike, you can unfold this um, so that it's kind of open. Um, so, this top part is the nose bridge, and that's what uh, seals on your nose. Do I need then, to pull the red thing back? <laughs> yeah, so it's it. kind of tricky. So, what I do is uh, is I take both of these both of these and uh, put them behind my head. So I put the chin on and put them behind my, both of them behind my head. Well, at least everybody's going to laugh at how silly I look. I'm trying to do this right. With the, with the nose thing facing up. Yeah, that's it. All right. Yay. And then, um, I adjust the, uh, I put the nose bridge over my nose and then I make sure it's sealing all around from the bottom. Um, and can you top. confirm that I'm doing that right? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, and then pinch the nose bridge so that it seals. Okay. And then take the top band, and it goes on the uh, crest of your head on the back here. Okay. And the bottom one goes on the back of your neck. Okay. So does that look yep. right? Sweet. Yep, just like that. All and right. if you get it right, you should be able to inhale rapidly, and it'll collapse. So and it should collapse slightly. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, I've got okay. another one over here. Um, I, you showed me how to do it earlier, so I've been doing it wrong all week. I'm gonna figure out how to take this off now. What's okay. the best way of taking this off? Oh, um, you, <laughs> you touch both of these, don't touch the front. Okay. And then um, pull it off over your head. 
So I grab the, yep, like that, and then over your head, like that. Oops. And then if you've been wearing this in public, with, uh, you know, at Walmart with a whole bunch of people, um, it's going to have virus on the front. Mm -hmm. and so you should at least just not touch it um, because it's completely contaminated <laughs> on the front. Um, I've seen some people put these in uh, like Ziploc containers. It's a good idea. Um, there's some YouTube videos on how they do that. And then, um, or sterilize it like we talked about. Okay, and this is a K95, or KN95, 9502 by 3M. And I'm assuming mostly same way. Oh, take off my glasses. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that before. Just kidding. <laughs> Okay, and you said to put the one on top like the, that still. The bottom one goes on the back of your neck. and oh. Yep, that one goes on the back and that one goes on the top. Yeah, like that. But on, on the crest a little more, a little further back yeah, so yeah. it doesn't slide off. Yeah, there you go. I've just got a big head, what can I say? And I don't think I have it <laughs> heard it quite right. And you should feel it sealing across your entire face. Yeah, I probably need to make sure to wash this one now. Okay. There you go. Sweet. Yep. All right. Well, That's thank great. you, Curtis. Um, hopefully <laughs> you're willing to uh, come back with us in a couple weeks and hopefully have better news. And um, if not, maybe you can give us some updates and some other tricks that can help us be more effective with everything and stuff. Does that sound good with you? Yeah, sure. All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening, watching. Uh, we care about you because uh, we say it as a joke, nobody's a nobody, but seriously, everybody here is somebody and um, everybody has a lot of value in their life and we want you to be able to live that life greatly. So thank you. And you're more than welcome to do all that podcast stuff, but we'll worry about that another time. Thanks.